As a content creator, a music producer, and a DJ, I rely heavily on using the accessibility tools that are built within Mac OS. And in this video, I want to be able to talk about it. And maybe you probably want to be able to use those tools too. And you don't necessarily have to have some sort of accessibility issue to use and they might be helpful for you. So let's talk about that. Hi again, I am Blanche. I am a DJ and founder of Local DJ Collective Soul Dust Productions. I'm also an aspiring music producer and a content creator. If you want to be able to keep up with uh, what's going on in my creative world as well as know more about DJ, music production, and uh, the tech surrounding uh, both of those, then subscribe to the channel click on the button below i am a person who has been blind in my left eye for most of my life uh, and have partial sight in my right though uh it had been uh much better after an operation that i had but i still do rely on accessibility equipment in that regard I also have moderate hearing loss, uh, which caused me to have to wear hearing aids in order to be able to chat with people, although I don't wear them at home because I don't have a real need to be able to wear them at home. Uh, but when I'm talking with people, that's probably the time that I have to pull those out. So that's uh, part of who I am. And to the extent that that's who I am, I have to rely on using the accessibility features in a computer to be able to get my work done. So this video is the first of two parts. In this video, I'm gonna talk about Mac OS accessibility. And in the next video, I will be talking about iOS uh, accessibility. And keep in mind that I am currently on Big Sur, which is the latest Mac OS, it's also known as version 11. The Zoom feature on Mac OS is far and away the most essential accessibility tool that I use in Mac OS. It's been sort of a godsend to be able to have something like that and have something that works so flawlessly and fluidly and it's just been uh, something that um, it's a second nature these days. With the zoom feature, I am able to zoom in and zoom out really quickly. I can go on a full screen and go all in to get very, very close to something that kind of needs my visual attention, but may be hard to see. And that happens a lot uh, in Logic, especially with the small fonts. And I just get really close in there and I feel comfortable knowing that, um, hey, I'm in the right spot. Even when I zoom in and out with the trackpad and my keyboard, it's not pixelated at all. And um, that is sort of a testament to the detail that Apple pays attention to when it comes to graphics. Another feature that I use is the cursor. In other words, what I do with the cursor is I make the cursor bigger. Of course, I use it all the time. Um, sometimes it might get in the way of something if I'm if I'm not pointing in the right place, I might have to move the cursor a little bit. Uh, but 99% of the time, the cursor works for me well, and I really appreciate this uh, the the big side because if I have a full screen, at least I have the cursor to be able to try to get me to where I almost want to go or uh, practically where I do want to go, and then I can be able to zoom in and zoom out and uh, get to where I need to go. Another great feature of Mac OS that I depend on is dark mode. It's only been out 
and baked into the operating system uh, in recent years. And it's been tremendous because I rely on seeing mainly uh, light text over dark background as opposed to the reverse, which is really hard to see, especially when the contrast is really bright or even if the contrast is not bright, um, the letters are really small and hard to read. I really enjoy the overall experience once I have dark mode turned on. Also kind of helpful are t other tools that take advantage of dark mode. System-wide apps had the ability to take advantage of dark mode and so will some third-party apps. Uh, if you allow it. For instance, Microsoft Outlook, I have dark mode turned on there, uh, but because I turn on dark mode on the Mac, it will uh, detect it uh, automatically. Those you want to, you can override that setting uh, inside Outlook's preferences uh, to be able to switch it over to a lighter shade. Another third-party tool that I rely on is the application reader. I am able to appreciate that I can be able to read light text over a dark background. You have several choices of your dark background, or you can be able to have just plain text over a white background if you wanted to be able to do that. So you have some options there, and you can be able to change the font size uh, and the spacing uh, as well. Safari has a great feature that's similar to Reader, the RSS Reader that I've just talked about, and it's called Reader View. And if you go up to the top of the toolbar and you go to the left, you'll either see a letter, uh, like an A, or uh, in the case of Big Sur, you'll see a little icon that represents uh, sc screen type screen with text. You click on it and then it's going to take away everything on the page except the text and images and links. And that's great because not only is it easier to read the page, but you're taking away all sorts of distractions, ads, a whole bunch of extra fluff that you're taking away and you're just focusing on the content. And I think that that's great, not just for people like me who uh, really need to be able to have a way to uh, read a little bit easier, but it's great for anybody when you want to be able to have a distraction-free reading experience, uh, one that I highly recommend. And Apple Notes also has uh, dark mode. In fact, most of the Mac apps do turn in the dark mode if you want to be able to have that feature on. And you can be able to override that if you want to. All right, so those are my most used features with regards to accessibility. There are a couple of other features that you can try that I've actually tried and I don't have as much uh, use for them at this time. The first option is called voice commands. And that command is what you think it is. With your voice, you can be able to tell the Mac what kind of commands you want it to perform and it, it will do it for you. But for me, I haven't used it as much because I tend to uh, get things done faster with the zoom and input combination. But it's there if you want to be able to use it. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, sometimes there are commands that I try that uh, doesn't work and that can be able to be time consuming if I have to repeat it again. Um, and yeah, you have to turn on the feature and turn off the feature. Uh, so that can get kind of long in the tooth over time too. That's just one of those things that you're going to have to try to see if it works for you. But um, it is a good feature. Uh, all I can say is give it a try. The other tool that I tried was called Dictation. Um, that is there um, if you want to be able to utilize it. It's not perfect. And uh, the clearer that you can talk, the better it is. Um, it also 
will be dependent in part on your network though it does download uh, a whole vocabulary on your computer the first time you run it um, but still um, it's a bit slower for, uh, relative to um, how I utilize it because I have to be able to make corrections quite a bit and maybe in time I'll uh, use it again and I just need to practice on it. I'm not giving it up but um, I don't use it right now but that is a feature that's available if you want to be able to take advantage of it. And that's it as far as uh, talking about accessibility for Mac OS. Maybe you want to be able to utilize some of them if you don't know about them already, whether or not you have accessibility issues. If you do use them, uh, what are your favorite Mac accessibility tools? And if you don't use them, uh, which one do you want to try? Which one uh, kind of popped out? But you should check them out. Again, the accessibility preference pane is there for you to be able to explore. And also, you could go to apple.com slash accessibility and you can find out much, much more about the accessibility tools, ways that people are utilizing these tools, and uh, it's just a deep, deep resource to try to find out about Mac accessibility. Once again, that's apple.com slash accessibility, and of course, I'll put the link down in the description. All right, everyone, thanks for watching and um, look out for the next video on macOS accessibility. All right, folks, talk to you soon. Peace.